Hello friends and welcome to Pi Shine. This is part 11 of the Pi QT5 learning series. In the previous tutorial, we made this GUI for the live audio stream. Today, we have updated that GUI with a stop button. We will talk about the QThread pool and how to stop a thread once it is started. We will monitor the number of current active threads as well. Alright, let's start with the basic definition of a thread. A thread of execution is the smallest sequence of programmed instructions that can be managed independently by a scheduler, which is typically a part of the operating system. QThread is a class that provides a platform-independent way to manage threads. On the other hand, QThread Pool is a class from the Pi QT5. It manages a collection of QThread objects. A QThread object manages one thread of control within the program. QThreads begin executing in run function. By default, run starts the event loop and runs a QT event loop inside the thread. QThread pool recycles each individual QThread object to help in reducing the cost of thread execution in the programs. To understand this concept, let's imagine the QThread object and QThread pool with different shapes and colors as shown. There are maximum of four QThreads that can be used at the same time by the QThread pool. Now, Imagine various tasks that can be started using the QThread pool. Each task can be a function that should run in several iterations using a while loop inside. A purple task is assigned on any empty QThread, let's say 3. Similarly the upcoming tasks are also assigned to the available slots. Once the maximum limit is reached, the new tasks will wait in the queue. Now, if a task has ended, the queue thread pool will recycle the empty queue thread object for the new task. This procedure will continue until there is no more task in the waiting queue. So why it is important? Making a thread per task will be expensive because it will use lot of resources. We can define limit to maximum number of threads. In this way, let's say if you have 1000 tasks to do and the max limit is 5, then only 5 of your tasks will run on 5 threads, while 995 of the tasks will wait in the queue, and the thread whose task is finished will go on to take that task. In graphical processing units, a dozens to hundreds of small threads run in parallel to finish the task in less time. The limit to the maximum number of threads is also kept dynamic, depending on the available resources and the number of tasks and their priorities. Alright, so how to stop a queue thread that is managed by the queue thread pool? A task is assigned to a worker, which uses iterations in a loop, to perform its operations. So. We can simply put a flag inside its loop. Initially, set the status of the flag to false. And when we need to stop it, simply set the flag to true. Once the flag is found true by the worker, in the next iteration, the worker will leave the task by finding a break in the loop. All right, let's have a look at the code. Left hand side is the updated code of this tutorial. The right hand side is code from tutorial 10. We have a flag called self.go on to stop the thread. Also the worker is initialized to none. Another push button is added to call the stop worker function. So now, one button will start the worker and another will stop it. We will check the go on flag in the while loop 
which is inside the audio stream of the get audio function. Once the loop is broken, we again set the flag value to false and activate all parameters for any user input. To refresh the canvas, according to the new parameters, we will set the reference plot to none in the start worker function. Here, in the stop worker function, we will set the go on flag to true. Also, we will clear the queue for any previous audio data. The print function will show the number of active threads managed by the queue thread pool. In the update plot, we also print the active thread count. The backslash R is assigned to the end in the print function, so that new line will overwrite the current printed line in the terminal window. Rest of the code is almost similar as before. Link to the source code is available in the description below. We can observe the variations in the plot according to the input parameters. Notice that the number of active threads become zero when the stop button is pressed. That's all for this tutorial. In the upcoming video, we will use a different approach to run and stop the queue threads. That's all for today. If you have questions, suggestions, please comment, share if you like, and subscribe to PyShine. Have a nice day and see you again.